Hello. Hi everyone, we're here today to talk about introducing solid foods to your baby. We're going to have a look at when your baby is ready to start solid foods and some of the mistaken signs. We're going to have a look at introducing solid food and the practical elements of how and when to get started. We're also going to look at concerns over gagging and choking. We're going to have a look at healthy eating and those concepts of a healthy lifestyle for you and your baby. And we'll also have a look at dental care, allergies, and give you lots of top tips too. In the UK, the current advice is to wait until your baby is six months to start solid foods. Now this is because we can see, although your baby is doing well on the outside, we can't always see what's going on in the inside. And this information comes from the UK Department of Health and the World Health Organization. And it's based on key developmental signs that we're looking for to let us know when baby is ready. So let's have a look at these. What are those signs that we're looking for? So the first of these three signs would be that baby is able to sit and hold their head steady. Now that doesn't necessarily mean sitting by themselves, that comes a little bit later, but if they're sitting in a high chair or a seat or sitting on your lap, are they able to hold their head and their neck steady? If they're still very floppy and falling their head forward, then they're, they're not ready at that stage. So being able to hold their head steady would be the first one. The second one is that hand to mouth action. So if they have a rattle or a toy, can they bring it from their hand up to their mouth or is it still kind of going all over the place? So they have to have that hand eye coordination and you'll be able to observe that with your baby at play. The third one is what we call the tongue thrust reflex. So babies, when they first start to have solids, will automatically make quite a mess, be prepared for it, lots of it will come back out. But if it looks as if the tongue is pushing everything straight out, so like this, that means that actually babies haven't lost that reflex and it's, it's pushing everything back out. They're not quite ready at that stage to start solid foods. And normally all three of these signs, so that tongue thrust reflex would disappear and those other signs would be ready around six months. So that's what we're looking for. And for some babies, this might be just before six months, for other babies, it might be just after. Just like us, babies are all different and we're looking out for those signs. You know your baby best and it's looking out for when you think they might be ready. So just to go back over over them here. This information is from the Start for Life website. You can still get lots of information from there. So that being able to stay in a sitting position and hold their head steady, having that coordination from their eyes, hand and mouth to be able to bring um, something up to their mouth by themselves and being able to swallow the food. If it looks like the tongue is pushing everything back out, then they're not quite ready. We would normally say at that stage to wait a few weeks and try again. And as we said, it's rare for all of those three signs to appear before six months. So as well as those key developmental signs that we've just had a look at, those three signs that let us know when baby is ready to solid foods, one of the main reasons that we would look to start solids at around six months is because your baby's um, iron stores are starting to deplete. So babies are born with a store of iron and around six months those vitamin stores are starting to deplete. So this is a perfect time alongside those key skills that we've just had a look at to introduce solid foods for your baby. They're able to join in at the table with you, able to enjoy all of those parts of family meal times that you enjoy together, to have the opportunity to explore all those different tastes and textures to perhaps have a touch and a feel of the food and enjoy and share all of those things that you join in together with as a family. So starting at six months, your baby's main nutrients are still going to be coming from their milk, from your breast milk or your formula milk. And then we would start to introduce some of those solids at a time of day that's good for you. Gradually, we look to build that up. We're going to have a little look at this more later. We begin to build that up with the aim that around nine months, your baby will be enjoying three meals a day and be very much part of that family routine. We want it to be a fun and enjoyable experience. It's as much of about that social interaction as it is about them being the next stage of their journey. So by now you've seen the reasons why we start solid foods and the signs that your baby is ready. There are some, however, some mistaken signs. These are things that people look at and think, oh, that means my baby is ready. You might have good natured, relatives, friends, kind of obviously got some ideas of when you should do this as well. So don't feel pressured. Obviously, we've got more information now and we know that waiting till six months is best. 
but a lot of people say all oh, my babies started waking more in the night does this mean they're ready for solid foods this can just mean they're going through a growth spurt they might just need more milk that's the thing um, also they're watching you eat they're like oh they're really watching me do everything well that's a brilliant thing because that's how babies learn and babies will watch you do everything and as they get older they are taking everything in so the fact that your baby's paying more attention to you doesn't mean that they're ready to have the food but it's a really good sign that they're watching you and you are their brilliant role model as well and also um, wanting more milk all the time like we've said that can often think oh I actually need to give them food whereas actually you're okay just to carry on giving them those milk remember we want those signs that we've talked about earlier to be there and like we've said they might be there before six months they might be there just after but you know your baby best and then once you start feeding as you've fed your baby milk i'm sure you've done responsive feeding we just feed when baby wants it baby lets you know when they're hungry so again the same when we're offering solid foods if we've made a portion we don't expect the baby to eat that portion don't have the mentality of they've got to finish the bowl they've got to finish everything we just want them to be enjoying it picking it up exploring it that whole kind of lovely um, experience for them and when they've had enough they will let you know they'll move their head maybe they'll close their mouth they'll start maybe throwing it moving it around they will let you know when they've had enough and it's really important we listen to those responsive cues to baby because that creates a lovely healthy um, uh, development and a lovely healthy relationship with food for going on as they get older So you've checked your baby has got all those developmental signs of readiness and you're going to start introducing solid foods. So where do you start? Um, babies can eat a variety of food from six months. They can eat fruit, they can eat vegetables, they can eat some meat, some fish, certain fish they can't eat but we'll cover that later. They can eat pulses, pasta, rice, they can have tofu, leafy greens, peas, lots of things out there. And they can even have eggs as well right from six months as long as the eggs are cooked and they have the red lion mark on them. So check for the red lion mark and your baby can enjoy even like a soft boiled egg with some soldiers as well we just don't want any raw eggs so no homemade mayonnaises or ice creams anything that can taste raw egg babies will naturally have a sweet tooth so we suggest starting with vegetables because we know they're going to like fruit so i've got some um, comparisons here um, i've cooked a carrot so just one carrot can make quite a lot of food for your baby all you need to do is peel it, chop it and boil it. No added salt, no added sugar. We don't add salt or sugar when we're cooking for babies and children. And then I've just mushed it up with a potato masher or you can use a hand blender. We want some texture. Do you remember we've said before, the tongue thrust reflex is gone and that's the whole point that they can start to move food from the front of the mouth to the back of their mouth. They're learning to chew, they're learning to swallow. So up until now, babies have just been used to sucking and swallowing liquid, haven't they? Whether it's their breast milk or formula milk, but now we want to add tastes and textures. So if you buy some commercially prepared food, there's lots out there and we know sometimes there is a place for them if you're busy, but some of them do say from four months, which obviously isn't recommended. And the reason they are from four months is because actually they are just a liquid. They are too pureed and so runny. I, I will show you here an example. This one's from four months. If I tip it up, you'll see, can you see it's just running out. It's literally a liquid. And that's not gonna be what we want from baby because baby's just gonna suck that down as they would their formula milk or their breast milk. We want some taste and texture. So my carrot, it is soft, but it's got some texture in it. It's not runny, it's nice and smooth, but it's not gonna like totally run off the spoon as that would, is it? It's got some texture in there. We want that for baby to explore. And we also want to offer baby some finger foods at the same time. We want baby to have a really holistic view of having a go at eating, because eating's about smell and taste and texture, and there will be mess, so be prepared for mess. Um, don't be mess averse. We want baby to explore it and start that lovely relationship with food. 
So as I've boiled this carrot, I've also cut some carrot battens and I've par-cooked them. We either boil them, par-boil them or par-steam them because we don't offer raw food um, to babies at this stage. So that's lovely and soft and we always do battens because we never cut anything in the round because that's more of a choking hazard. Round is not our friend. So ideally the lovely baton shape that baby can hold in their palm and a bit of it's gonna be sticking out the top of their palm. So that's great. So that's a par cooked carrot. You can have some par cooked broccoli. If you use some fruits, obviously you won't need to par cook them. Some lovely banana batons or some avocado batons. That's great. They're gonna squid it, they're gonna have fun, but that's what we want, exploration. Remember at this stage, their breast milk or their formula milk is still their main source of nutrition. We're not worried about how much baby's getting in them at all because they're getting all their nutrition from their breast or their formula milk. We just wanna start that exploration, that whole newness of having food and different tastes and textures in their mouth. While we're offering food now, we're also gonna offer water. And babies in this country can drink our tap water from six months, it's perfectly safe. And we want to do it in a free flowing cup. What we mean by that is not one with a valve or a travel valve, um, because that will take too much sucking for baby. It can have a lid, classic one like this, but when we tip it up, whoosh, it's all going to flow out. It's free flowing. You can also use a normal beaker. Um, just a normal plastic beaker and babies will initially whoosh it will go too far but they soon get the hang of it it's really surprising so the more baby does it the more baby will get it and and they really do get the hang of it a lot quicker than you think this one's called a doidy cup it's got a slope so obviously baby doesn't have to tip it as far so they're really good as well and while you're offering food to baby you eat at the same time. So even if it's not your meal time, just eat something because again, that's how babies learn, don't they? From watching us, from modeling you, you're their role model, they're watching everything you do. So if you eat at the same time, that's great. And ideally we want that lovely relationship with food and we want it to be a social experience. So, you know, they're gonna be having meals with you as a family and that's lovely. So then we're starting off, we normally say introduce one thing at a time, just so we can check there's not an allergy there, but we'll go through um, allergies a bit later on as well. Um, and then by seven to nine months, we're gonna be introducing maybe a bit more food. We think of it as some scales here. When we're starting off, milk is the main food, whether breast or formula, and our solid foods is down here. And then eventually as baby gets older, they will start naturally wanting less and less milk and more and more solids. So by the time they're about a year, they're gonna be on three meals a day and three snacks a day. So that's lovely. They're gonna be eating with you as a family. You can all eat the same foods together. And sometimes it makes you eat a little bit healthier yourself now as well when you're having to decide to cook for your baby as well. One of the common concerns we hear when you're starting to introduce solids to your baby is that of choking. Obviously, parents are really worried their baby's going to choke. Now, babies will gag. There is a difference between gagging and choking. Baby's gag reflex is really quite far forward in their mouth. It's a lot further forward than ours is. So when baby's having spoons put in their mouth or they're holding those lovely carrot batons and they're pushing things in, they are going to gag. It will be a natural reflex. And a lot of parents can worry then and think that they're choking. So what's happening is baby's putting it in. Eh! They're gonna make a noise. They might go red. Eh, 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 they're spluttering. We don't need to do anything at that stage. We're gonna let baby sort that out. Remember, this is a new process for baby. Baby's got to learn to move their tongue around to move that food where it needs to go. And baby will find it tricky at some times and they are going to gag. So we say, if it's loud and red, we let them go ahead. 
because if we suddenly stepped in at that point, we could move the food further down and make it worse. So it might be worrying, but just watch your baby. If they're eh, 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 leave them, let them sort it out. Obviously choking, that's a different issue. With choking, they're not going to be making a noise at all. It's going to be a whole different process. You will notice that they, they, they won't be able to get noise out. The things moved, the, the um, food, the lump has moved further down. So it's silent. So it's silent and blue. We say they need help from you. Their lips could be turning blue if they're not getting enough oxygen in as well. So obviously at that point, that is an emergency procedure and you will need to call 999 and get some help. Okay, but try not to worry. I know it's really worrying, but like we've said, if you remember loud and red, let them go ahead, silent and blue, they need help from you. And what's reassuring is if you've got first aid skills. Some people have been on first aid courses, but if you haven't been on a first aid course, especially linked around children, we do offer first aid courses through the Family Centre. So have a look later on if you feel that is something you would like to do. So thinking about healthy eating, once your baby reaches a year, their main nutrients will be made up of three meals a day and ideally perhaps a snack in the morning and a snack in the afternoon. So that can be quite challenging as a parent to try and fit in all those different meals and, and have a healthy balanced diet. Behind me just here is what we call the Eat Well Guide and this gives a good guide when planning a meal, obviously for yourselves but for your baby or your toddler of all the different food groups and what it should contain. So if we're thinking about this as a plate, the a first third of your plate here would be all of those fruits and vegetables so there's nothing here that baby can't have as we explored earlier fruits and vegetables are a great way to try all those different tastes and textures so we've got examples here of fresh fruit it could be frozen vegetables and it could be tinned veg or tinned fruit just be careful with things like tinned um, fruit that it's in its natural juice and not in syrup because that would be quite high in sugar so this is a great example of different foods that they can try just remember to keep offering those opportunities to try different foods sometimes when we offer things to a baby for the first time we might give up after two or three times and say they really don't like cucumber or they really don't like this actually the best advice is to try up at least 10 times and we often give up much sooner than that and this is because baby's taste buds are still developing and the more opportunities we give them to try and taste all these different foods the more likely they are to enjoy these sorts of foods later on in life and things can taste very different can't they a banana for example would be very different to the taste of an apple or a pear so keep exploring with those rainbows of all those different fruits and vegetables the other third of your plate would be made up with those starchy carbohydrates. Now these are the foods that give us energy. So things like potatoes, rice and pasta, things like oats and cereal. And children are going through such a rapid period of growth and development, so they need lots of energy to keep them going. Um, we need to be careful in this group not to have foods that are too high in fibre. So things like wholemeal bread and wholemeal pasta are great for us as adults or for school aged children. But for babies, they can actually act a little bit like a sponge and soak up sort of all the foods in their tummy and not give them enough room for the other foods and nutrients that they need. So perhaps avoid those high fibre foods for babies. So that would be our other third. And then the other part of the plate, the last third, is actually made up of three separate groups. So the two biggest groups in this, looking at um, our meat, our protein foods, meat, meat alternatives, things like eggs, they're the things that help with all our bone and our muscle group. And again, babies and children are going through such a rapid period of growth, this is really important for them. The only things that we would say to avoid in this group would be the sort of things that you would have avoided when you were pregnant. Fishes and things that are high in mercury. So things like swordfish and shark if you are eating any of those in your family. Um, in the dairy and alternatives group, lots of opportunities there to explore different foods. The only foods that we would avoid in this group would be things like the unpasteurized cheeses. Again, things that you would have avoided in pregnancy. We've talked about cow's milk is fine for um, babies under a year if it's part of a meal that you're making, but from a year it would form part of their main drink. And then the very last third, this very small part here, is made up of things like oils and spreads and those unsaturated fats in our diet. So this is always a good thing to have when you're thinking about planning your baby's meal times 
or when you're thinking about making healthy lunch boxes and things like that later on. The only thing that doesn't come under this food group here that you would need to avoid for babies, and this is for under a year, would be honey. Honey contains a very rare form of botulism and it's not suggested for babies that are under a year. So have fun exploring all of those different foods. Um, we've got some examples here of other foods and things that you might find when you're out and about. It can be very challenging as a parent, particularly when you go to the supermarket and you're faced with a whole aisle of different products aimed at babies and toddlers. Um, we talked about earlier about things that might be marketed as babies under six months. Unfortunately, you will still find in that supermarket aisle some foods for babies that are labelled for four to six months, although this is against their Department of Health recommendations. You will find all sorts of other foods and snacks and drinks and things. The best things can be those things that you would typically have at home as part of your normal family meal times. There isn't anything apart from avoiding some of those foods we've talked about, making sure that you're not adding any salt or any extra sugar. Um, things like spices can be used in baby's foods, but just introduce them very gradually. So if you typically cook with lots of spices, make sure that when you're cooking as a family, you just very gradually introduce those foods and that baby gets a chance to get used to them. The other thing that can be typically quite high in salt would be things like gravies and stocks. So again, just be careful, use a very low um, salt alternative or make baby's portion first. And then if you're going to add things like gravies or stocks, add them later on. So they're just some of the things to be aware of. And this is because anything that we know baby and toddler gets used to at this age, these are the sort of foods and the sort of taste that they're going to develop later on in life. So it's very much about establishing those good habits and having healthy lifestyles for their future. So looking at some of these things here, these are some of the things that you might see out and about for babies. Um, they're great for when having in your handbag for when you're out. They just don't offer the great opportunity for all those different tastes and textures that we talked about. They tend to be made of very similar tastes, lots of carrot, lots of tomatoes in here. And although they say they don't have lots of additives and things in here, they're heat treated. So a lot of those important nutrients would have been lost. And let's face it, they're expensive. Um, we've got some other alternatives that you might want to make at home. There's an example of a snack here as well. So veggie straws, for example, well, we've got some vegetable sticks that we made ourselves. So if you can be prepared and make some of these things before you go out, they're not only much cheaper, they're kinder on children's teeth as well. So have a look at some of those other things there. The other thing that's important to mention at this stage is about vitamins. You can come along and get vitamins from the family centre for children under four years. It's recommended that they have a daily supplement of vitamin D. So from birth to a year, that daily supplement that's recommended is from 8.5 milligrams to 10 milligrams, but that's only unless they're having um, more than 500 mils of formula milk. If they are having more than 500 mils of formula milk, they won't need them. They'll get them vitamins in their milk. But once they drop below that, then it's suggested that they have that vitamin D supplement. And then from a year to four years, it's 10 micrograms. But if you come and speak to us in the family centre, we're able to offer those free of charge. And it's suggested now that from children four years plus, you still continue with that daily dosage, particularly in the winter months. And this is really important for all of us. Once your baby's teeth appear, obviously it's really important that we take care of them right from the get-go. Once you start weaning, your baby might have teeth. They might not have teeth at six months. They all develop their teeth at an individual rate. What we want to do as soon as we see those lovely little teeth appearing is clean them the same that we brush our teeth twice a day. So ideally, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. But don't worry if you don't do it dead on first thing in the morning, the most important one is doing it before bed. So there are lots of lovely little um, baby toothbrushes out there. There's an example of one that baby can hold themselves. You might want to let them just do that and play, but then you come in and then you give them a, a proper brush too. What we're going to put on that brush is a tiny pea-sized amount of a fluoride toothpaste that's branded for their age group. So you will see in the supermarkets the right age um, toothpaste right for your baby. There's another one there, a longer one, but you're just going to give them a little brush twice a day. Keep them lovely and clean. And while we're talking about teeth, obviously, as I mentioned before, we're not adding sugar, we're not adding salt in baby's diet, but there is a lot of hidden sugar out there. And when your baby gets a bit older and you're on the go and you're thinking of buying some pre-prepared snacks, just try and be aware. It's quite scary. Things that you might think are a really healthy snack, like a yogurt, 
for example, or even a nice cereal bar marketed to look really healthy have really high levels of sugar in them. So just be really mindful when you're out and about. There's lots of snacks that you can just bring for your baby and your toddler when they get older things that don't have any added sugar in them, like cheese and breadsticks, vegetable sticks, dipping them in hummus, that's a lovely one, rice cakes, obviously fruit has got naturally occurring sugars, but that's absolutely fine for baby. So just be aware, we're looking after those teeth and we're watching out for those hidden sugars. And we're also not giving them any drinks that are made for a baby, you might see some juices out there. There's so much stuff marketed for babies. Remember, all your baby needs is water. They can drink our tap water from six months and their milk. They don't need any other drinks at all. Okay, so just keep an eye out for those lovely hidden sugars and brush your baby's teeth twice a day. By waiting until your baby is six months to introduce solid foods, we know their digestive system is much more able to cope with the introduction of these new foods. However, there are some foods that have a higher risk of allergens that you might want to look at introducing one at a time and not before six months. These foods include dairy and eggs, wheat, gluten, fish and shellfish, and nuts and nut products. If you're concerned that your baby has an allergic reaction, some of the things you might want to look out for could be signs of a runny nose, breathing difficulties, perhaps something you might notice on the skin, a rash or hives where there's an area come up. The best thing if you're concerned about any of these is to speak to your GP, but of course, or ring 111, but of course, if you feel your child is having a severe reaction, is to seek emergency medical help straight away. But always get that advice and find out about it. Thank you.